war never changes. When atomic fires consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground revolts. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establish new villages, form new tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flags of the new California Republic, dedicated to the old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth. In the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert, they returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and set it east to occupy the Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had been under a different flag, a vast army of slaves forged in the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, they gathered strength. Campfires burned. Trading drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip had stayed open for business under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribes and police robots. You are a hard time for a player, seeking a new mod that will not bore you to death. Welcome to the Mojave Desert and one of the best mods for hard time for. Because war, war never changes, but Heart of Iron 4 does. I'm Player HOI, and welcome to this review of Old World Blues. Welcome everybody to this review of Old World Blues. Now before we go into this review, I should tell you that this mod uh, is mostly relevant for those who have played Fallout New Vegas. If you haven't played Fallout New Vegas, then you should definitely go and play it, like right now, okay? It's one of the best games, probably the, one of the best RPG games ever made. And uh, obviously this mod will not be relevant for you since there's a lot of backstory and uh, a lot of lore that you should be aware of before you play this mod. But for those of you who have played it, again, welcome to the review and uh, let's go in and see what this mod is all about. So the mod transfers uh, Hearts of Iron 4 into the Fallout New Vegas world. Now, for uh, the purpose of this review, I played three of the uh, probably most recognizable ones, which are New Vegas, headed by Mr. House, the New California Republic, and Caesar's Legion. Now let's take a look at uh, what's happening in the mod. And uh, first of all, we'll begin with the map. So there's a completely new map uh, for the mod, mostly comprised of the United States, uh, some parts of Canada, most of Mexico, actually all of Mexico. Most of your action will be focused on the Western seaboard of the United States with the New California Republic and Caesar's Legion in the American Midwest. Now the map is really, really detailed. There's a lot of strategic placement on the map. So there are a lot of areas, for example, where you can't attack, right? For these, like these, for example. So you really have to, most of the time, look for openings and position your troops in a very strategic way so that when war uh, finally comes, you are able to attack your enemy and you are able to block him where he can attack you. Now, uh, while this is great and it, it works for most of the time, there are some times uh, which can be a little bit frustrating where you can't really, you can't really put a decent front uh, with your enemy since there's a lot of these rivers, for example, that have these very specific crossings. So if you'll try, for example, to create a front across this whole section, you will not be able to do that. And that can be a bit frustrating since it does force you to split your armies. Also, these one provinces will hold a lot of troops. Uh, now, I understand why this was done. I think that in part it's done to change the gameplay a bit 
so that you are not fighting with these massive armies like you used to in Hearts of Iron 4. So I get it, but it does cause a little bit of frustration. Uh, also, the map has a lot of smaller details. Let's go ahead and look at these. So, for example, you'll have these eagles flying everywhere, right? That's a really cool detail, which I really liked. There are also some notable landmarks, like the Lucky 38 in New Vegas. That is very cool. I like that very much as well. And uh, in general, the terrain, you've got these new uh, sprites for cities, all of these things done as well. Obviously, there are some uh, leftovers from the Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, uh, but that is understandable. The mod is still in development. It's not finished, so things will probably change as development continues. Also, there are new icons for settlements. That is also cool. And uh, in general, the map looks very good uh, and it's very pleasant to look at and to fight in. But uh, overall, the map is quite awesome. There's quite a bit of a part of the United States which is empty. Now, I don't know if it's included because the mod developers are planning on expanding this whole eastern seaboard area as well and include that in the mod maybe although i'm not sure how that will affect performance since right now the mod actually runs quite good i haven't noticed any noticeable lag but if they do uh, we'll see how things go although for now you do get a lot of this empty space uh, the terrain still looks awesome uh, but uh, there's nothing there right and as far as i can tell you can't really colonize these new empty states so they're not really used for the purpose of this mod so that is it about the map. Now let's move on to general graphics and see how the graphics have changed in the mod. In terms of graphic, the mod has some really impressive graphic work and you really see that uh, whoever does the graphics uh, on the team has done a really good job. Now, uh, the first thing you'll notice are the new loading screens, which are very styled and really get you into the mood of the mod. The next thing you'll see are the new portraits. Now, I'm not sure where they got the portraits for these, but these are uh, quite uh, nice to look at as well. Well, I think that some of them could be better. So um, I'll just sc scroll through some of these now so that you can take a look at them. And as you can see, some of these are very nice. There are also the animated portraits, which are very nice. For example, we have uh, Mr. House, right, in uh, New Vegas, who has an animated portrait. And there's also this thing, uh, which, uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure what that is or how it fits into the lore of the game. You'll also notice that uh, many of these nations have their own unique flags, and these are definitely quite interesting. I'm not sure that all of them had their own flags in New Vegas, so it's quite possible that the developers had to come up with new flags, uh, new completely original flags of their own, so a very nice job right there as well. Another thing that is really impressive are the new 3D sprites, and most of the countries have their own unique sprites. So for example, if a country has raiders, right, if it's a country of raiders, then they will have their own unique uh, sprites and the uh, Caesar's Legion has their own sprites. Also, Mr. House has his has his uh, unique Securitrons, uh, which are really cool. And as you unlock new weapons, your units also gain uh, new sprites for the weapons that they're holding. So at the beginning of the game, they'll be holding these pipes and just hitting the enemy with them. But once they get guns. If you are playing a Raider Nation or the Caesar's Legion, then they will start holding guns as well. Now, occasionally you will encounter uh, missing graphics. So, for example, here, as you can see, some ideas have the same graphic. Some are missing in a graphic completely. Some ministers are missing graphics as well. But uh, the mod is still in development, so that's understandable. These are things that will probably be fixed as development continues. Another thing which uh, I actually didn't like very much are the focus graphics, right? So as you can see, the focus graphics have these like uh, metal plates things. 
and uh, I'm not sure why, it could be just me, but for some reason it just seems to all blend together and for me at least it's quite hard to tell these focuses apart. Now obviously in this section here all of the focuses have the same icon, so that explains it, but even when they have different icons, sometimes it all blends together, so it's a bit difficult to distinguish, but hopefully this is also something that will change uh, in time. Also some of the focuses have vanilla icons, which uh, don't really fit uh, into this mod, and hopefully these will be altered as well. But aside from these, the new graphics, the new sprites are really quite amazing, and you can really see the attention to details and the love that was put into these graphics by the development team. Okay, now let's talk about the gameplay. So as a total conversion mod, almost all of the gameplay in the game was changed. And let's uh, take a look at some of it. So first of all, we have new resources that you're going to be trading for. All the vanilla resources have been changed. And uh, the new resources obviously fit the Fallout world. So you got stuff like water, quite a rare resource in the desert and especially water that is not contaminated by radiation. So you will need to refine water and uh, make it drinkable so that your population can use it. There is also energy, another resource which is quite rare in this post-apocalyptic world. We've got scrap metal which will mostly be used to repair and build your mobile units. And then you have uh, other resources which are used for more advanced techs. All the resources have been spread across the map and you will need to either fight for these resources or you will need to become friends with the large factions that control most of them. Also, most of the major nations in the game have their own factions. So the NCR, the New California Republic, has its own faction. And Caesar's Legion can also have countries uh, join. Although, to be honest, during my playtime, I have not managed to uh, make any of these smaller nations join the Legion willingly. And I had to conquer most of them. Also, the mod introduces a completely new tech tree with a lot of new techs uh, for you to explore. Also, there are texts which are obviously more relevant to specific nations. So, for example, we've got robotics, something that, uh, for example, Mr. House in New Vegas will be using quite extensively. And uh, I have to say that those robots can become quite powerful. We also got uh, some infantry equipment, so you can turn your big army of slaves into a professional force which will be fighting uh, much better when the time comes to strike the new California Republic. There are some industrial techs which allow you to develop the scarce resources of the desert and improve your overall construction. Technologies that are quite similar in their functionality to the Hard to Iron 4 technologies, but obviously have a completely new context in the Fallout world. There are also some naval techs, uh, which are quite fun to see. So you've got these really old ships, and then you can actually start converting them into something which resembles uh, newer ships as you continue along the tech tree. There are also new doctrines for your armies to fight with. And also you have quite an interesting tech tree for your air units to develop a decent uh, air capability. And as I mentioned before, one of the coolest things is that as you develop these techs, your armies will also change and you will see them adapting these techs in the field. Another thing that I noticed is that at least the factions that I played, which are the NCR, New Vegas and Caesar's Legion, they have uh, unique new generals and military leaders, right? So that is a very cool touch. Some of these have portraits which are obviously uh, the 3D rendered from the game, but others have these very unique portraits and they have their own unique skill tree, right? So there are new skills here with new icons uh, to really give flavor to your new military leaders. So that is also very cool. 
again throughout this mod you see the developers have put a lot of time effort and thought into making these new features unique and uh, so that they stand out from the vanilla hard 74 features also there are obviously new laws and ministers for your country to use as well now uh, i did like some of these icons since i don't know they sort of don't really give me the idea of what's changing between laws but the laws are quite different there are some weird ones so for example with slavery you have a law for example here with organized slavery which doesn't really give you any benefits so it kind of begs the question why would you want to have any of these laws except for the laws that actually do give you benefits now it's possible that it's more has to do with lore right so that these are laws that are forced upon you and you have to change them but i think it would be better if all laws had some kind of a benefit to them even if they do have some bad modifiers as well so that you have to think and pick one over the other and not just have one obvious law which gives you much better bonuses than any other ones also another thing which is very nice is that the developers did not go uh, with ideology spam so you only have four ideologies in the mod and that is very nice since this is one of the reasons that you have such good performance in the mod and it also doesn't confuse you with giving you too many of the ideologies and most of the ideologies of the fallout universe are just spread into these different nations which have their own flavor their own look their own flag all of these things so i think it's it's a much better approach uh, by the developers than just including tons of new ideologies speaking of ideology spam there's also no event spam so you don't have events spamming you all the time endlessly and most of the events that you get are quite interesting and have a meaning to them right so there is a there is a reason why you get the event uh, so that is also very nice the focus trees have a similar structure so there are the four uh, first focuses usually it's four could be something different with other nations so the first focuses will give you a little bit of a background about the world and uh, give you a choice to make in how the world is shaped, how your relationship with your neighbors are shaped. And after that, you proceed into these uh, mostly, most of the time, these three branches that allow you to change different aspects of your country so you can uh, enhance your military or you can uh, upgrade your territory, or you can have some interactions with your neighbors, mostly by conquering them. And the structure is very similar through all of the uh, different countries. And that has a benefit, but also a bit of a disadvantage to, to it. Since in my opinion, at least, uh, it does make the focuses feel a bit repetitive, even though they have different effects. Uh, the same structure makes it look like it's the same uh, but this might be due to the problem that I noted before with the focuses, focus icons not being too distinguishable so sometimes it feels like you're doing the same focuses when in fact you're not something else that bothered me a little bit when playing Caesar's Legion is first of all the fact that they have a huge industrial base so you have 29 military fact factories and this is despite the fact that Caesar's Legion is n isn't really supposed to be this very technologically advanced uh, nation, if it's a nation at all. Uh, although as far as I know, it's supposed to be like this gathering of slaves and enslaved people ruled uh, by an iron fist, right? So I'm not sure that lore-wise they're supposed to have a lot of these military factories, but I could be wrong, I'm not an expert on the followed New Vegas lore and also another thing which was a bit weird is the fact that in terms of your occupied territories you have cores on all of these territories now it's possible that it changes uh, as you play but I haven't really noticed uh, any loss of uh, cores on any of these territories and it might be more interesting if you had this challenge of keeping this legion together with all of these occupied nations. I think that the fact that you do see all of these different cores as part of Caesar's legion 
is an indication that perhaps in the future the, de the developers are planning on uh, removing some of these cores and let you play with the challenge of maintaining this big country together but perhaps they didn't have time to implement it just yet with the occupation system being a new one and only releasing with La Resistance we'll have to see how it goes in the future you also have a new currency in the game or I should say that you have three you have the Legion Denarius you have NCR dollars and you have the bottle caps and uh, once you join either the NCR or the Legion, you can switch to use any of these. And there's also slaves in the game, which uh, can enhance your industrial capacity. Another small feature that I really liked, uh, that really brings character into the new models, is the fact that they all have their sound clips from the game. So, for example, when you click uh, Mr. House's robot, they have a few lines that they can say. So, for example, like this. Good to see you. I bet you're up to something. Please obey all weapon laws. Enjoy your time in Vegas. Be advised, visitors will be held responsible for the behavior of any non-human sapiens accompanying them. And I'll let you discover the other ones uh, on your own. The mod also incorporates a lot of the sounds and effects from Fallout New Vegas. So when units on the map are fighting, their weapon effects will be similar to the effects you hear in Fallout New Vegas. Okay, so it's hard to summarize a large mod like this, which brings a lot of new things into the game. But uh, I'll simply say that this mod is quite enjoyable. It has a lot of new gameplay features it's uh, very responsibly made so you don't have a lot of bloat uh, a lot of stuff that's just there to make you feel like it's full of content and uh, despite the fact that the mod is still in development and you do have some missing features here and there all of these things don't really take away from the experience you will no doubt uh, enjoy the mod especially if you like to follow new vegas so I highly recommend this mod and I can't wait to see what the developers come up with in the future uh, in new updates to the mod. So this is all I have to say about the Old World Blues mod. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video on the Iron Workshop. Bye bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Check out these other videos on the Iron Workshop that you might enjoy as well. Please consider supporting the Iron Workshop on Patreon. This will allow the channel to grow and become even better. Thank you.